In this video, let's understand the organ of corti. In order to understand the organ of corti, let's break down the topic so that it becomes easy for us. First, let's understand the location. Then let's study the structure of the cochlea. Structure of the cochlea is very important to understand the structure of organ of corti. And the last point, the structural and functional differences between the outer hair cells and the inner hair cells. Remember that the hair cells are the receptor cells which are present in the organ of corti. This point, if you are adding in your answer, this is going to fetch you more marks. So let's begin with the location. So where is it that our organ of corti located? Organ of corti is located in the cochlear portion of the inner ear. There are other parts of inner ear like the semicircular canals, the utricle and the saccule. These three structures, the semicircular canal, utricle and saccule, together they form vestibular apparatus which is important in the maintenance of the balance. But the organ of corti which is present in the cochlea is concerned with hearing. Okay, it is concerned with hearing. Now, as you are seeing here, the cochlea is a coiled shell like structure. So when I uncoil this cochlea, that is when I can understand the structure of the cochlea. So when I uncoil the cochlea, I see that the cochlea has got a base and it has also got the apex. And also the cochlea is divided into three parts by means of two membranes. So what are these membranes? This is one membrane. This is called as the reasoner's membrane. This is one more membrane. This is called as the bacillar membrane. So the part of the cochlea which is present above the reasoner's membrane is what is called as the scala vestibuli. The part present below the bacillar membrane is called as the scala tympani and the part present in between these two membranes is what is called as the scala media. Both the scala vestibuli as well as the scala tympani they are filled with a fluid and that fluid is called as perilymph that is called as the perilymph. Even the scala media is also filled with a fluid and that fluid is called as endolymph. Okay, this is what we should understand. Now the endolymph is rich in potassium whereas the perilymph is rich in sodium. Remember that the scala media which is bounded by the basement membrane and the reasoner's membrane is also having one lateral boundary and this lateral boundary is what is formed by a structure which is called as stria vascularis. This is a structure which is called as the stria vascularis. So the stria vascularis is the one which is secreting the endolymph and at the base the scala vestibuli has got a oval window here you are seeing this and this oval window is closed by the foot plate of the stapes. Similarly at the base the scala tympani has also got a window which is called as a round window this structure and the round window is closed by what is called as the secondary tympanic membrane. So in all this where is it that the organ of corti is located? The organ of corti is located on this membrane which is called as the basement membrane. So here is the exact location of the organ of corti. Next let's understand the structure of organ of corti. The organ of corti has got so many components. So we will study each component one by one and all these components you are supposed to write in your exams. The first component is this. What is this called? This is called as the pillar cell or this is also called as the rod of corti. So there are two rods of corti, this, these structures. This is the inner rod of corti and this rod what you are seeing that is called as the outer rod of corti. Both the inner and the outer rod of corti are present where they are present on this membrane and this is called as the bacillar membrane. Now the inner rod of corti, outer rod of corti and the bacillar membrane, they form a triangular space and this triangular space which you are seeing here, this one, this is called as the tunnel of corti. So this is the first component. Second component are the receptor cells and there are two types of receptor cells. One type is present medial to the inner rod of corti and that is called as the inner hair cell. Another receptor cell is present 
lateral to the outer rod of corti and these are called as the outer hair cells so we have two hair cells the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells now these hair cells are very important because these hair cells are the receptor cells so if they are receptor cells what is it that they are doing they are converting the auditory vibrations which are entering into the cochlea into electrical impulses which are called as action potentials so the hair cells they are having tiny projections coming out of from their apex these tiny projections are either called as hair or they are better called as stereocilia or they are called stereocilia and the stereocilia they are present in an increasing height from one end to the another end their height gradually goes on increasing from one end of the cell to the other end of the cell also remember that the tips of the stereocilia they are connected by thin filamentous structure and this thin filamentous structure is what is called as the tiplings it is called as the tiplings remember that the stereocilia has also got what is called as mechanically gated ion channels it has got mechanically gated ion channels so what is the importance of these ion channels is that whenever the sound vibrations enter into the cochlea they cause vibrations of the basilar membrane whenever there is vibration of the basilar membrane what is going to happen is the stereocilia move in the direction of the tallest stereocilia so when that happens there is opening of this mechanically gated ion channels and as i have already told you that the endolymph is rich in potassium so when the endolymph is rich in potassium the potassium from the endolymph because of the opening of this mechanically gated ion channels enters into the cell that causes depolarization of the cell and it results in generation of the action potential now this is how the hair cell is converting the sound vibrations into the action potentials so the second component what we have studied are the receptor cells which are called as hair cells and there are two types the inner hair cell and the outer hair cell the third component we are going to study is that these hair cells also require supporting cells they have to be supported structurally so the supporting cell for the inner hair cell is called as the inner phalangeal cell what you are seeing here this is called as the inner phalangeal cell and the supporting cell for the outer hair cells here you are seeing these cells these are the one which are called as the deter cells what they are called they are called as the deter cells so these are the third component so first one was the pillar cell or the rod of corti second one we saw the receptor cells that is the hair cells and the third one is the supporting cells the fourth structure is what is called as the reticular lamina so this one what you are seeing here which is held by this rods of corti so this reticular lamina is the one which is passing through the apical portions of the hair cells and even the stereocilia they pierce this reticular lamina and then they go up so what is the function of this reticular lamina is it helps in providing anchorage and a support to the hair cells provides anchorage and support to the hair cells now the last one is what is called as this gelatinous membrane which is called as the tectorial membrane so it's a gelatinous membrane which is overhanging the hair cells so what does this do is that the stereocilia which are arising from the outer hair cells they are completely embedded in this gelatinous structure which is called as the tectorial membrane whereas the stereocilia which is coming from the inner hair cells they are just touching the tectorial membrane so how many components this did we study here we have studied five components the pillar cells the hair cells the supporting cells the reticular lamina and then the tectorial membrane next let's understand the differences between the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells this is what is going to give you an edge over others if you write these points so first let's understand the structural differences the inner hair cells they lie medial to the inner rod of corti already i have explained outer hair cells they lie lateral to the outer rod of corti inner hair cells are single row of cells 
whereas outer hair cells are three to four rows of cells. Inner hair cells are 3500 in number, outer hair cells are 20,000 in number. Inner hair cells receive 90 to 95 percentage of the afferent innervation whereas outer hair cells receive only 5 to 10 percentage of afferent innervation. So see what I am telling is afferent not efferent whereas inner hair cells receive very less efferent fibers whereas outer hair cells they receive majority of the efferent fibers. Got this point? So these are the five important structural differences between the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells. And if somebody asks you from where is it that they are receiving these efferent fibers, the efferent fibers are coming from what is called as a superior olivary nucleus. Superior olivary nucleus via fibers which are called as olivo cochlear fibers olivo cochlear fibers fine and these afferent fibers are the one which these are the bipolar neurons which are going to form the cochlear division of the eighth cranial nerve and then the impulse enters into the auditory pathway and it is carried to the auditory cortex it's also important to understand the functional differences which are existing between the inner and the outer hair cells the inner hair cells most important function is the help in auditory transmission as i have told you the help in the conversion of auditory vibrations into action potentials second is they also help in transmitting this action potential to the cochlear nerve that is why the inner hair cells are richly innervated by afferent fibers they also help in processing of the sound intensity and the frequency now what's the function of the outer hair cells Outer hair cells increase the sensitivity of hearing by a mechanism which is called as cochlear amplification, a very important point. If you write this, this is going to impress the examiner. Outer hair cells also help in discrimination of the sound frequency, different sound frequencies I have to discriminate and it also provides a feedback to the cochlea, thus helping in regulation of the sound processing. So this is what you are supposed to write in your exams. If you have any doubts regarding this very topic, please leave them in the comment section. I will try to solve all of them.